हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अजय सोलखे प्रजेंटली वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर यूनिवर्सिटी स्कूल ऑफ मैनेजमेंट कुरुक्षेत्र यूनिवर्सिटी कुरुक्षेत्र हरियाणा इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू एग्जाम इन द वेरियस लीगल प्रोविजन ऑफ द फैक्ट्रीज एक्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी एट अपॉन कम्पलीशन ऑफ द मॉड्यूल द स्टूडेंट शुड बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ द फैक्ट्रीज द वेरियस लीगल प्रोविजन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू हेल्थ सेफ्टी एंड वेलफेयर ऑफ वर्कर्स वट आर द प्रोविजन दैट गवर्न द इम्प्लॉयमेंट ऑफ यंग पर्सन एंड वुमेन इन फैक्ट्रीज रूल्स रिगार्डिंग एनुअल लीव विद वेजेस Before moving further we need to examine what are the objects behind passing of this act the act has been enacted primarily with the object of protecting workers employed in factories against industrial and occupational hazards for that purpose it seeks to impose upon the owner of the occupier certain obligations to protect the workers and to secure for them employment in conditions conducive to their health and safety with regard to applicability of the act at any place wherein manufacturing process is carried on with or without the aid of power or is so ordinarily carried on not withstanding that wherein 10 or more workers are working or were working on any day of the preceding 12 months and in any part of which a manufacturing process is being carried on with the aid of power or is ordinarily so carried on or wherein 20 or more workers are working or were working on any day of the preceding 12 months and in any part of which a manufacturing process is being carried on without the aid of power or is ordinarily so carried on the persons working therein are not employed by the owner thereof but are working with the permission of or under agreement with such owner with regard to the important definition as stipulated in factories act 1948 adult here means a person who has completed his 18th year of age a adolescent means a person who has completed his 15th year of age but has not completed his 18th year child here means a person who has not completed his 15th year of age a young person means a person who is either a child or an adolescent day means a period of 24 hours beginning at midnight week means a period of 7 days beginning at midnight on saturday night calendar year means the period of 12 months beginning with the first day of january in any year power means electrical energy or any other form of energy which is mechanically transmitted and is not generated by human or animal agency prime mover means any engine motor or other appliance which generates or otherwise provides power under section 2m factory a premises wherein 10 or more persons are engaged if power is used or 20 or more persons are engaged if power is not used in a manufacturing process but it does not include a mine subject to the operation of the mines act 1952 or a mobile unit belonging to the armed forces of the union a railway running shed or a hotel restaurant or eating place occupier under section 2 n the person who has ultimate control over the affairs of the factory it includes a partner in case of a firm and director in case of a company in case of a government company occupier need not be a director in that case person appointed to manage affairs of the factory shall be occupier approval licensing and registration of factories under section 6 making an application to the government or chief inspector along with the duly certified plans and specifications required by the rules sent to the state government or chief inspectors by registered post and no order is communicated to the applicant within 3 months from the date on which it is so sent the permission deemed to be granted if the application is rejected appeal can be made to the government with 30 days of the day of such rejection section 7 notice by occupier the occupier shall at least 15 days before he begins to occupy or use any premises as a factory send a notice to the chief inspector containing the name and situation of the factory the name and address of the occupier the name and address of the owner of the premises the address to which the communications relating to the factory may be sent the nature of the manufacturing process the total rated horse power installed or be installed in the factory the name of the manager of the factory for the purposes of this act the number of workers likely to be employed in the factory such other particulars as may be prescribed general duties of the occupier occupier shall ensure the health safety and welfare of all the workers while they are at work in the factory 
every occupier shall prepare a written statement of his general policy with respect to the health and safety of the workers. Bring such statement in any revision thereof to the notice of all the workers. The inspecting staff under section 8. The state government may appoint chief inspector, additional chief inspector, joint chief inspector, deputy chief inspector and inspectors. Prescribe their duties and qualifications. Every district magistrate shall be an inspector for his district. Every inspector is deemed to be a public servant within the meaning of the Indian Penal Code. Powers of inspector. Under section 9, every inspector can enter factory premises for investigation. They can examine the premises. They can inquire into any accident or dangerous occurrence. They can require the production of any prescribed register or document. They can seize or take copies of any register, record or other document. They can take measurement and photographs and make such recordings. They can exercise such other honours as may be prescribed. No person shall be compelled under this section to answer any question or give any evidence tending to incriminate himself. Certifying Surgeon under Section 10 State Government may appoint qualified medical practitioners to be the Certifying Surgeon. The duties of surgeon are the examination and certification of young person under this act, the examination of persons engaged in factories in dangerous occupations, supervising the factories where the case of illness have occurred which are due to the nature of manufacturing process or due to the manufacturing process there is a likelihood of injury to the health of the workers. Young persons are employed in any work which is likely to cause injury to their health. Chapter 3 discusses the various provisions relating to the health ranging from section 11 to section 20. Under section 11, cleanliness. Under section 12, disposal of wastes and effluents. Section 13 spells out the provisions relating to ventilations and temperature. Section 14, dust and fumes. Section 15, artificial humidification. Section 16, overcrowding. 17, lighting. 18, drinking water. 19, latrines and urinals. And section 20, spittoons. Provisions regarding health. Very first is cleanliness under section 11. The working condition should be clean and safe. Clean the floor at least once a week by washing or by some effective method. Effective means of drainage shall be provided. Whitewash every 14 weeks and paint or varnish every 5 years. Under section 12, disposal of wastes and affluence. There should be proper arrangements or disposal of waste and effluence. State government can frame rules in this regard. Under section 13, ventilation and temperature. Proper level of ventilation and temperature and humidity must be maintained. Make provisions for reducing excess heat. Under section 14, dust and fumes. Effective measures should be taken to prevent inhalation or accumulation of dust fume. If any exhaust appliance is necessary for it shall be applied as far as possible to the point of origin of the dust, fume or other impurity. Artificial humidification as stipulated in section 15. Factories in which the humidity of the air is artificially increased like in textile units, keep it in limits. The water used for artificial humidification to be kept clean. Overcrowding under section 16. 14.2 cubic meter space per worker has been earmarked as per the specifications given in this act. While calculating this space, space above the worker beyond 4.2 cubic meters will not be taken into account. Notice specifying the maximum number of workers which can be employed in any workroom shall be displayed in the premises. Section 17, Lightning. Sufficient and suitable lighting in every part of the factory. There should natural lighting as far as possible. All glazed windows and skylights used for the lighting of the workroom shall be kept clean. Formation of shadows to such an extent as to cause eye strain or the risk of accident to an worker shall be prevented. Drinking water under section 18. There should be drinking water, wholesome water. Drinking water points to be marked as drinking water. They should be at least 6 meters away from washrooms, urinal, latrines or spittoons. If more than 250 workers are working, then factory should make available cool water facility in that premises. Under section 19, latrines and urinals, there should be separate facilities for male and female. Proper cleaning should be there. Spittoons under section 20, there should be sufficient number of spittoons. No person shall spit within the premises of a factory except in the spittoons provided for the purpose. Whosoever spits in contravention shall be punishable with fine not exceeding 5 rupees.
Chapter 4 discusses the various provisions relating to the safety of worker ranging from section 21 to 41. It spells out the various provisions relating to the safety. Fencing of machinery section 21, section 22 work on or near machinery in motion, section 23 employment of young persons on dangerous machines, section 24 striking gear and devices for cutting off power, section 25 self acting machines, section 26 casing of new machinery, section 27 prohibition of employment of women and children near cotton openers, section 28 and 29 hoist lift lifting machine and others, section 30 revolving machinery. Pressure plant section 31, floors, stairs and means of access section 32, section 33 pet sumps, openings and floors and others, under section 34 excessive weights, protection of eyes, caution against dangerous fumes, glass and others section 35 and 36, under section 36A and 37 precaution regarding use of portable electric light, explosive or inflammable dust gas, section 38 precautions in case of fire. Section 39 specifications of defective parts or test of stability. Section 40 and 40A safety of building and build machinery. Lastly, section 40B safety officers. Under section 21, fencing of machinery has been spelled out. Every dangerous part must be securely fenced. The state government may, by rules, prescribe such further precautions. Section 22 machines in motion. Examination of machinery in motion only by a specially trained adult male worker wearing tight fitted clothing. No woman or child should be allowed to work on such kind of machines. Machines in motions, section 22. With regard to this safety provision, examination of machinery in motion only done by a specially trained adult male worker wearing tight fitted clothing. No woman or child should be allowed to work on such machinery in motion. Under section 23, employment of young person on dangerous machine. No young person should be allowed to work on dangerous machine unless he has been trained and is under the supervision. Striking gear devices, section 24. There should be suitable striking gear devices to switch off the power so that if there is any emergency, problem can be solved. Self acting machine under section 25. Make sure that no person should walk in a space within 45 cm from any fixed structure it is not a part of a machine. Under section 26, casing of new machinery. All machinery driven by power and installed should be so sunk and cased or otherwise effectively guarded as to prevent any kind of danger. Under section 27, cotton openers. No women and children are allowed to work on cotton openers. Hoists and lifts. Section 28. Every hoist and lift should be in good mechanical construction and properly checked. The maximum load it can carry must be clearly mentioned. The gates should be locked by interlocking or safe method. It should be it should not open in between to be properly examined in every six months. Section 29 lifting machines, chains, ropes, lifting tackles, cranes, lifting machines, etc. to be of good mechanical construction to be examined once in every 12 months. Cranes and lifting machines not to be loaded beyond safe working load. Cranes not to be approached within 6 meters of a place where any person is employed or working. Revolving machine under section 30. Maximum safe speed must be mentioned for each machine. Speed indicated in notices should not be exceeded to. Pressure plant under section 31. There should be a safe working pressure on pressure plants. Effective measures should be taken to ensure that safe working pressure is not exceeded. Floors, stairs, etc. Under section 32, all floors, steps, stair, passages and gangways should be of sound construction and properly mentioned. Section 33, pits, sumps, openings and floor. Pits, sumps and openings and floors should be securely covered or fenced. Excessive weights under section 34. No person should be employed to hold more weight than the person can hold. Protection of eyes under section 35. Provide goggles if worker have to work on something stretching to the eyes. Section 36. Dangerous fumes. Prohibited to employ workers in places where dangerous gas or fume is present. Practicable measures should be taken for removal of gas and fume etc. Portable electric light under section 36A. It should not be above 
24 volts explosive or inflammable dust gas etc under section 37 take all measures for safety and to prevent explosion or ignition of gas fume etc precautions in case of fire there should be separate exit for cases of fire there should be facilities for extinguishing fire role of inspector section 39 40 and 48 talks about various roles that have been assigned to the inspector they may call for details regarding buildings machines etc section 40b safety officer if thousand or more workers are employed appoint a separate safety officer section 41 power to make rules to supplement the above provisions state government can make rules requiring the provisions in any factory of such further devices and measures for securing the safety of persons employed therein as it may deem necessary chapter 5 welfare provisions under section 42 to 50 under section 42 washing facilities has to be provided under section 43 facility for storing and drying clothes has to be provided under section 44 facilities for sitting has to be made available section 45 there should be a first aid of appliances in the organization section 46 canteen facility has to be provided section 47 shelter restroom and lunch room provision should be there section 48 crutch facility needs to be there section 49 welfare officers washing facilities under section 42 there should be washing facilities in every factory for the workers separate for male and female workers properly screened conveniently accessible and shall be kept clean under section 43 facilities for storing and drying of clothes there should be facilities so that worker can place their cloth not worn during the manufacturing process there should be facility so that worker can dry their wet clothes under section 44 facilities for sitting suitable arrangements for sitting shall be provided and maintained for all workers obliged to work in the standing position if the worker can do the work by sitting there should be sitting arrangements for the worker under section 45 first aid appliances has to be provided there should be at least one first aid box for every 150 workers it should have the prescribed contents a responsible person should hold a certificate on first aid treatment an ambulance per room should be there if the number of workers is more than 500 under section 46 canteen if the number of workers is more than 250 the government may make rules for canteen the government may make rules regarding food stuff construction furniture equipment of the canteen section 47 shelter restroom lunch room when 150 workers are working there should be restrooms lunch room etc such places should be having drinking water facilities also crutch if the number of women workers is more than 30 there should be the crutches it should be sufficiently lighted ventilated and to be under the charge of a trained woman welfare officer under section 49 if the number of workers is 500 or more there should be a welfare officer to look after the welfare of the workers hours of work of adult workers with regard to working hours for adult workers it has been stipulated that section 51 weekly hours not more than 48 hours a week section 52 spells out that the first day of the week that is the sunday should be a weekly holiday section 53 says about compensatory holidays where a weekly holiday is denied he shall be allowed to avail the compensatory holiday within a month section 54 daily working hours no adult worker shall be allowed to work in a factory for more than nine hours a day section 55 interval for rest no worker shall work for more than five hours before he has had an interval for rest of at least half an hour inspector may increase it up to six hours only spread over under section 56 inclusive of rest intervals they shall not spread over more than 10 and a half hours in any any day inspector may increase the spread over up to 12 hours night shifts if shift extend beyond midnight a holiday for him will mean a period of 24 hours beginning when his shift ends prohibition overlapping shifts under section 58 work shall not be carried on in any factory by means of system of shifts so arranged that more than one relay worker is engaged in the work of same kind at the same time extra wages for overtime if workers work for more than nine hours a day or more than 48 hours a week extra wages should be given wages at twice the ordinary rate restriction on double employment under section 60 no worker is allowed to work in any factory on any day on which he has already been working in any other factory section 61 notice of period of work for adult workers notice to be displayed at some conspicuous places periods to be fixed beforehand 
classification of workers groups copy of notice and duplicate and any change to be sent to the inspector register of adult workers section 62 63 the manager should maintain register of adult workers showing name nature of work the group the relate to which they are attached to of each and every adult worker the registrar shall be available to the inspector at all time during working hours provisions regarding employment of young persons the provisions range from section 67 to 76 very first is section 67 that deals with prohibition of employment of young children no child who has not completed his 14th year of age allowed to work in a factory under section 68 non adult workers to carry tokens a child who has completed his 14th year may be allowed to work in a factory if a certificate of fitness for such work is in the custody of the manager of a factory such child or adolescent carries a token giving a due reference to such certificate certificate of fitness it is a certificate which is issued by a certifying surgeon after examining him and ascertaining his fitness for work in factory it is valid for 12 months revocation of a certificate by a surgeon if child is no longer fit fee is payable by the employer fee and renewable fee effect of certificate of fitness granted to an adolescent if a certificate of fitness has been granted to an adolescent he is he will be deemed to be an adult for the purpose of hours of work working hours for young persons section 71 and 72 working hours limited to 4 and 1/2 hours not during nights period of work limited to two shifts only entitled to weekly holidays fixation of female to work only between 6 am to 7 pm fixation of periods of work beforehand register of young person the manager should maintain register of adult workers showing name nature of work the group of each and every adult worker in the factory the register shall be available to the inspector at all time during working hours section 73 power to require medical examination inspector has the power to direct manager to have medical examination of young persons in working in case young person working without license and they are no longer seems to be fit employment of women prohibition of women workers at night shift women shall not be allowed to work in any factory except between the hours of 6 am and 7 pm the inspector may relax this norm but prohibited between 10 am and 5 pm working hours not more than weekly 48 hours and daily 9 hours annual leave with wages the provisions are stated in section 78 to 84 under chapter 8 rules leave entitlement one day for every 20 days of work performed in case of adult and one day for every 15 days of work performed in case of a child who has worked for period of 240 days computation of period of 240 days the days of layoff maternity leave not exceeding 12 weeks and earned leave in previous year should be included discharge dismissal superannuation death quitting of employment under section 92 some of the general penalties for offences if there is any contravention of any of the provisions of the act the occupier manager each shall be guilty punishable with imprisonment for a term up to 2 years with a fine up to rupees 1 lakh or with both section 93 further extends if the contravention under section 92 continued after conviction they manager and the occupier shall be punishable with further fine which may extend to rupees 1000 or for each day on which the contravention is so continued no court shall take cognizance of any offence under this act except on a complaint by or with the previous sanction in writing of an inspector the complaint shall be filed within 3 months of the date on which offence comes to the knowledge of an inspector but it can be 6 months if offence consist of disobeying a written order made by an inspector appeal under section 107 the manager of the factory or the occupier on whom an order in writing by an inspector has been served within 30 days of the notice can appeal against it to the prescribed authority friends i hope you have understood the contents of the factories act 1948 you can also refer to other quadrants of this module for testing your knowledge on factories act and having some more input on the recent amendments happy learning